Hi. What's up? Hey, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever you may happen to be. This is another Fouquet Hangout. Welcome to the show. Um, we've got a very special one today with the transfer um, ceremony special. Um, so we're going to have to spend some time talking about the excitement of new members. Um, uh, we'll have a wee look through the, the show, what happened in there, and uh, hopefully what we can expect to see coming from the guys as well, some of the, the usual news. So um, um, for those who may not know, um, I am Doug, uh, or the Glimmer Twin on most social media. Um, spend most of my time behind the camera, but I've come out front today to help uh, to help run the show. So uh, I'm joined by uh, two of your favourites, if you guys want to say hi. Uh, I'm Frankie, Sutia. I go by Sutia on most SG social media accounts. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Kanchiniwa, if you don't know me, or if you've never been to the Fuge Hangout, or you need Reddit, I'm Kanchiniwa, I don't exist on Reddit anymore, no, I'm kidding, I'm still there, but yeah, I go by Ivana, I guess my real name, but yeah, welcome to the Fuge Hangout. And background, we've also got uh, Austin, who you may know as Fouquet Metal, who's running the show behind the scenes for us this evening. So shout out to Austin um, as well. So without any further ado, I suppose we'll kick off. So um, obviously the, the main news, the big news for this uh, this month was the transfer ceremony and the, uh, the new members that came in. Um, so I think hopefully everyone has uh, has watched it by now. We're obviously going to talk through it all, but um, I, I was I actually really enjoyed the the show this year. I thought it was really good. You guys? Yeah, me too. Yeah, was, and uh, yeah. of course, if you haven't watched it, spoilers, of course. Indeed, spoilers. spoilers like <laughs> all the spoilers. All the spoilers. So yeah, uh, I was really impressed with the. Um, I was really impressed with the. The performance aspects um, of the show. Um, I don't know if, if it's, it was just my perspective, but they seem to be really on form um, throughout um, all the songs. Uh, <laughs> maybe I, don't know, I was a little distracted by some of the. Um, I, I didn't. I didn't think the singing was that on point. I feel like Aiko was yeah, really nervous I, I and had some mess ups. I mean, my my shout out to my girl Aiko who never fails to sing, but uh. I felt like some of the singing wasn't on point. Is there any particular sort of aspects or things? Yeah, there's any reasons? Yeah, like, uh, I feel like some parts, uh, Aiko, like, I, I thought noticeably Aiko had some fails in some of her solos. Um, Megu in particular just not, has, hasn't always been a strong singer. Yeah, I have to agree so with Megu. That, that, that kind of stood out. Um, I actually think the best performance by a senior that that day was Momoko. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that as well. I thought she 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 stood out for me. Um, the singing itself wasn't necessarily amazing, but it, I felt she was really solid throughout um, compared to um, compared to Aiko and, and Megu. Megu, she, I don't know, she sounded really flat for some reason the whole show. Um, I thought she was still quite good though, but yeah, it just seemed to be lacking a lot of something. She sounded very similar to Marine as well, um, who had a sort of an odd tone. Um, but uh, one, of the, one of the things I quite liked is even although some of them might be a bit off, they seem to all be at a similar. They they seem to be quite together, um, in terms of how they sounded. Sometimes they seem to. Or certainly in other performances, the um, there's a big difference between some of the older ones and the younger ones. But I thought that they were quite level um, for all of these form performances, which for me made it seem quite together. Yeah, uh, like some people mentioned, I forgot to mention this, but uh, a frosty guitarist said that uh, I go miss most of her first line in um, I believe it was the first song "School Days," I believe, which yeah, that was a big standout. And a lot I think, of people, she, and, I think she even mentioned it at um, one point. Oh, yeah, yeah. She mentioned it earlier. I think when she was, spoiler, <laughs> getting her position. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. That part. <laughs> getting her position. We'll get to that later. 
<laughs> and she mentioned that how she was nervous because she messed up her first line. Um, and then Shotep or Shotep uh, said a lot of people mentioned they looked rather uneasy during the whole show. Yeah, I, I feel like they're just really uh, stepping up like, as seniors. They felt probably felt like really nervous and uneasy. <laughs> but there are some uh, good parts to the show too, like Doug said. Like, um, I, I'm not much of a dance analyzer, but I felt like their dance was fine. Oh. Yeah, the, the the thing that stood out for me was they seemed to be very in sync. Um, I say I don't know if it's maybe I don't know if it's maybe that I've not seen as many of the live stuff recently, um, and that's why it does say to me it seemed quite good. Um, Although, you know, you've pointed out, I can see the sort of the nervous aspect to some of the other ones because Aiko did, um, I remember watching it going, I remember everyone going on about how good of a singer Aiko is and it, that wasn't coming across as well. But yeah, I thought the dancing was quite was quite put together and uh, as I say, in sync, because that's something that I tend to notice sometimes, which, uh, you know, is obviously when you've got sort of 10, 12 people, it's quite hard to keep yourself um, all in sync together with one another, but they seemed... Especially um, at this at around this time of the year, when you're learning two different formations, yeah, uh, for songs because you ha you have new people coming in, and you're you're assigned for some of them they're assigned new roles, and they also have to learn okay. a different position for the ten man songs. I believe they did um three ten men, three or six something like that, three or six ten man songs, might have been more. Uh, well, before they before they brought the the new ones in. Yes, yeah, so before they brought new ones, so they had to learn uh, complete so different informations from what they've known so far. They would have had, uh, if my notes are correct, then they'd have had, there would have been eight. So I think there was eight. Oh no, sorry, seven. Seven new songs, seven songs before the the new guys came in. Yeah. Because there's School Days, Very Shuvi, and then Chime. Was the first block, and then they did Hello Ivy, Song for Smiling, Animal Rhythm, the second block, then they did uh, Kimi no Todoke, uh, which I believe that was the last of the 10 man because the next song was Peace the Check, so it was just the two of them, and then after yeah. that, they had the new ones in. So, speaking of the set list, how do you guys, um, how do you guys feel about it? I'm surprised they actually performed Animal Rhythm. That yeah, yeah. I was surprised at that as well. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel like everybody was like it. It hasn't been performed been performed since the beginning of the 2014 Nendo. Well, I guess like first half of 2014 Nendo. Like that song was just ignored for since it's released. Yeah, and I'm surprised they didn't even perform it the any time during the last few years because they're bringing back so many songs, especially during 2015, when uh, at least I believe it was Shirai's influence that got them to do a lot of old songs. And in 2016, when they brought back some random songs here and there, I'm surprised they didn't bring back Animal Rhythm, like for graduation or something. But uh, I think I tuned out really well. And just that list in general, I think the side was awesome um, with yeah. um, Animal Rhythm, Kimi ni Todoke, which is one of my favorites. If you haven't seen uh, our top five songs, <laughs> it's one of those songs. <laughs> And although the top five songs was like a collaboration of ideas, I I put in my vote for Kimi Todoke, so that's why I believe uh, to be one of the best songs. So you can watch that video if you haven't. Click on our YouTube channel, you can find it there. <laughs> uh, any other songs you guys um want to comment about? I like the fact that they did a uh, song for Smiling. I love when they mm. perform it. They've brought it back ever since Marian joined, I think. Mm. So they're really utilizing her English, and I think it's really cool. Uh, I don't, I don't like, I don't like, I don't like it though. Uh, I don't like the new version. Shut like, up, in the, Frankie. <laughs> in the in the album where they give her most of the English parts, I, I felt like it was, it was really unnecessary. Uh, <laughs> you I'm, I'm you kinda, try I'm and do with... the English parts, then Frankie got. <laughs> I'm sure I can do the English parts. I'm kind of with I'm kind of with Ivana on that one. I mean, I I quite like the new one. I there is a slight. Um, I mean, I I really like the song as a live performance because it has one of my favorite choreographies as well. I like the wee the bit when they do the kind of they're in two groups and they do the wee bounce. They kind of put their legs up and meet meet their oh, leg yeah. to the hand. 
Three Bounds. I really like that movie. I think it's really fun. Um, and, uh, and the song itself. And I, 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 I quite like that they've, they've given that, that thing to Marine to kind of to kind of run with. The only thing I don't like about it is that it, it creates a slight um, a, a slight disparity when you go from one person singing and then immediately to sort of 10, 12 people singing, it, it kind of is a bit of a jump, especially yeah. when it's then compared to the second <laughs> verse when you've got them all doing it because there's less English. So there's right. a wee bit of a, a jump there. However, there, I do think they can fix that, but I'll come to that later because it involves some of our oh, yeah. <laughs> um, But I feel like because it is a remake, like, and there's another version to compare it to, in the old version, we have everybody singing the English lines, whereas in the remake, you have one person singing English lines, where so you say, but you would argue that it's a remake. It should be different from the beginning, from the first one. But as we learn from movies, remakes aren't always better. <laughs> you should stick to some of the old ideals, like one of the arguably better remakes, remake movies has, has done in Star Wars, where it, it took a lot of the older ideals and uh, incorporate into a new one, and which a lot of a lot of people liked. I wouldn't say, of course, not everybody liked, but a lot of people liked. So I thought they should have stuck with the everybody singing English. Maybe give her like one or two English solo lines to like make it stand out. But I definitely don't think she should she should have gotten that much of these solo lines. So, so like, I think that... yeah. In conclusion, Frankie hates uh, Martin. No. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, but you guys can vote in the chat who you, if you prefer everybody English or just Martin English. And uh for scum fuck fuck. Uh Wow. Well, I was just saying continue your language. The set list was uh school days, very shivy, chime, some the Hello Ivy, Song for Smalling, Animal Rhythm, some NC again. Kimi told the some NC again. Please sit check. <laughs> and then um Friends. Some other stuff. Oh, they did the transfer, and then they did friends, and then you made me cut it. Yeah. Yeah. That was the list. <laughs> uh, another song, uh, of course, we, we kind of talked about this, about this a little bit already, but Animal Rhythm was really good. Uh, I, that was actually my first time seeing the uh, choreography for Animal Rhythm, except for, like, the little small part in the MV you see. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, it was, it was my first time seeing the choreography, and I really liked it. And... It was great because from what I can tell, most of the songs that they performed in the transfer ceremony had live singing, from what I can tell. Yeah. And most of the oh, songs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you can definitely tell. <laughs> yeah. Could, I think it, it, there's, there's definitely singing in all, all, I think, pretty much all of them. Bar one. Except, <laughs> well, except <laughs> one noticeable one. <laughs> yeah, there's some that's, it's just so far you away from live tell. singing. Uh, it, uh, yeah, it's it's kind of like if you went to Japan and saw the graduation. I can't say if you watched the recent graduation because it's not out yet. Wait, wait, is it out yet? Am, 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 I, being, am I being dumb right now? It's not out yet, right? No, it happened two months ago, Frankie. Okay, yeah, I'm not I'm not being dumb. Yeah, it hasn't happened, so you can't see it yet. So, but if you did go and see it, it a lot of it was live singing, and then you got to heart no hoshi, and it it was the same feeling. It was the same feeling as when they got the pizza check. When they got the hard no hush in the graduation, yeah. it was like, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, besides that, the rest of the set list was pretty uh, standard. I was a little sad to see that there wasn't a new pizza check song, but maybe that would never happen. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Um, are you guys okay, hoping for a new piece of check song? I hope for new songs in general. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for for all. Just, the year but... just started, Frankie. They, they're not just going to hit us with a new song. Maybe. They, they, they hit it with, with six transference two years ago. Yeah, but that's not a song. <laughs> oh, right. Um, But besides songs, though. But yeah, you're right, though. They're probably not going to hit with a song until like maybe TIF or... The festival, which is when they usually do it, right? Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But besides song, the MCs are pretty interesting. Um, like um for the animal rhythm, the after after animal rhythm, they had you guess some of the poses they did. 
Um, like for example, Sugu started off with a bird-like pose, which I feel like most of us thought it was a flamingo. And someone in the crowd even shouted out Sugu Mingo, which I thought was pretty cute. Sugu Mingo. <laughs> yeah, but it what wasn't was it a fl- It was a swan. <laughs> it was a swan. <laughs> Um, and then Kano had a cheetah, and Marine had something no one could guess, which is a capybara. Which, if you don't know what capybara is, I think it's just like, just imagine like a really large rodent. How I are think, you supposed to guess a capybara? I don't the know. She wasn't even doing. They've actually done it before. Why? Um, I think it was. Uh, Oga? I think it was uh, Olga. Yeah. Yeah, so. I think she actually even mentioned Oga after she did that. But it was really hard to tell because if you didn't if you didn't have the recent memory of Oga doing it in mind, she did, did like an ear thing, yeah. which is really hard to guess because that could have been for like any animal. And the copybotter doesn't have really any significant standout poses that you would do. It's most significant. The most significant feature of capybara is the fact that they're mentioned in animal rhythm. <laughs> that's that's their most biggest claim to fame. <laughs> true, true. I I can only imagine if you were there live, though. It must have been really difficult to see as well because she's like completely on the ground, pretty much. Oh, definitely. Um, and Shotep mentioned a little bit about Kawaibu keeping the same members for the next three years, so they'll be kind of forced to have new songs. Uh, I don't necessarily think so. Um, one thing I forgot... not really amused very well. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing I forgot to mention is that um, that in this version of um, Kobaibu, in the Transference moment, they're actually using uh, Kansai Ben, I believe, which is uh, like a dialect or accent. So mm-hmm. they could just do a Kansai Ben version for the... <laughs> album remake if they really wanted to and call that a different version because it technically is different that does sound like something they would do yeah so, um that's I, mean, I don't understand why they why they just don't do some new new things because i mean the new album obviously has all the band versions they're of, busy with the play man songs, wow. and and they're basically the same thing um it's, it's kind of funny actually because I was less, I've, I've, I've sat and listened to the the old and new versions um, quite a bit, and a lot of them, the ones that are called band versions, I think sound less. Like if I was going to apply the phrase band version to one of them, I would more apply it to the original versions than the newer ones. Ah, uh, um, yeah. I, I actually, like we were talking a little bit about the album remake. The only band version I really, really liked that we got earlier, and we got it earlier too, was was, was which is what Ultimate I meant to say. Was, yeah, Ultimate Gokuro, which I really liked, and I still would uh, play it. Uh, I play I play that the most out of the band versions when I'm like listening to songs. So apart from what about like MC stuff? MC stuff. Uh, they also had other MC stuff. Any, uh, anything you want to mention, Doug? Um, well, I thought overall the MCs were pretty good. Um, they seemed quite, uh, in comparison to, like I said, there was maybe a bit of a nervous feel to some of the performances of the songs, but they seemed to be quite, um, certainly in the first half when it was mostly just performance before they got to the, the introduction of the new guys, um, they seemed to be having a lot of fun and quite relaxed. There was a lot of what I would characterise as banter. Um, between them, um, with the little skits and stuff, they had uh, a well, few little I sections. Did her little telepathy thing again, and uh, mm. so I oh, right. ended this time. Yeah, they decided yeah. to add on to the tele- telepathy thing by including Soyo into the um, what do you what do you call it? A skit, a, a gag, uh, a yeah, one of those. Yeah, they decided to include uh. Sorry, I make it the the psychopath pair or telepathy pair, <laughs> psychic pair, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> which trouble. could be interesting for yeah trouble, <laughs> like Team Rocket, uh, trouble. 
Speaking of trouble, they also had another pair do their little gag, which is always a favorite of mine, uh, at least, which is the uh, Sugumi Yuzumi pair. Mm. Although I felt like this one was a bit lacking to the usual performances, but I thought I still thought it was pretty good. They have lots of little, lots of little pairings that seem to to run through, which I thought was quite good. Um, sort of tracked up against, like you said, yeah, they had Yuzu and Tsugu, they did one, Marine, Soyo, Megu and Momoi had a wee moment as well. Right, um, right, when they were, because they were talking about uh, what kind of new pe new people they wanted to see, and Megu said she didn't want any more Burrico characters, because mm. apparently two is enough, and then Momoi <laughs> counteracted by saying, I accept any kind of student, and I would treat them with, like, the utmost care or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> which was pretty, which the audience took pretty uh, humorously because they all gave out a, a pretty good laugh. Yeah. So there seemed to be a good reaction to, as I say, most of them. And when, um, when Kobaibu were doing their little bit of MC, audience seemed to be loving that. Yeah. And uh, I believe it was, uh, I think for transfer and ceremonies, they actually have a smaller size audience than most yeah. other performances, which you could argue contributes to the uh, better atmosphere. Mm. Yeah, it definitely seems to be a slightly smaller audience. Like, see, I think that's, that's quite good as well. That it allows them to, I think, interact a little bit more with them. And I imagine it's probably useful for the new ones in terms of nerves and stuff as well. No, right. and before we move on or talk a little bit more, I want to mention the pictures on the screen that are passing by right now, or that were passing by, of the new uh, pictures, the new profile pictures. And I want to give a shout out to the Reddit. If you haven't seen the subreddit, we up we updated, or they updated, the new header and side image banner thing. It looks really nice, and it's, it stands out a lot in my it eyes. It looks nice. I really like it. Yeah. It, it just really stands out for some reason compared to the other one. At least I think it. I think it does. I hadn't actually seen those before. I'm just looking. <laughs> yeah, Give it I a look. Right now. It, like, let, 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 let my, so it must have only changed recently. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we've uh, got the wee squares. What with that? When did that happen? Yeah, I think it was the last few hours, but we'll have Missing Real give us the actual answer instead of just shade faces. <laughs> oh, see, some of you haven't even seen it either. So, there you go. You're welcome, Miss Real. All right, I see the, 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 I don't know what would it be called, the picture on the right hand side. It's got everybody in now. So you yeah. Just had the, the three. Cool, cool. Uh, interesting point. I want to know if anyone else has noticed this actually. The, the photo that's in the banner, you can't see it in that photo, but where that photo comes from, um i've noticed in group shots like that and if you go to the the sg home page where where you get the you know they're all like lined up in front of the blackboard photo. Uh -huh. if you look at those photos um they're usually all just standing there and, and doing what the repos or whatever but um but megu for some reason is always has one leg lifted and I don't know why I've noticed this, but now, I now can't not see it. And it's the same last year as well with those photos. She's always got one leg, like, half sort of lip folded right up. It's bizarre. I don't know. Has anyone else, has anyone else noticed that? Is that just me? I actually yeah. haven't. Well, maybe, maybe someone in chat, chat it's has. Her, it's her little habit that she does. Yeah. Maybe she has a lot of habits, actually. Not a bad thing, but. It's nice to know he was looking for suggestions, he's saying. Oh, he's had oh, a no, he, he, for a week. It's he, he was looking for just some banners. They had a thread they going updated, for the... They updated the banner this morning. So they, there you go. Um, but yeah, other than that, the banner image looks great. Congrats, mod team. Keep doing your thing. Uh... Anything else you guys want to mention about MCs and um, songs before we kind of move on to the main highlight of the show? I think that's it for me, at least. Doug? Yeah, that's pretty much the, pretty much the main things, I think. All right, let's so, get on to the next part. 
the big news. The obviously we had two new members um, joining the group. Um, so we've made um, or the hosts made predictions on this um, in the last episode um, of the Fuki Hangout when we were talking about the graduation ceremony. Um, so just to have a wee, we'll have a, I thought we'd have a wee recap of how everyone got on. Um, Frankie, do you remember what your predictions and or hopes were? What you said? Yeah, I think I said I wanted. I think a child smiles person was going to enter, and I said if I had to choose one, it would be Lillian. Um, and I, I think I said, uh, I predicted two fifth graders because I thought that would be best for the group. Mm. So two fifth graders and one from Chelsea Miles, and I had to choose Lillian. So you, you mean you were almost bang on with that, to be fair. You know, we, did, we did get a Chelsea Smiles and a fifth grader <laughs> in there. Just not, just not the one you'd hope for. Um, although I'm sure you'll grow to, to, to love the one that we got nonetheless. Um, Austin, our tech team, he uh, he thought we were going to get child smiles as well, and was just interested in new faces, whoever they were. And uh, Gabe thought we were going to get a fifth grader and a sixth grader. And then Ivana, do you remember? Do you remember your prediction? Okay, so initially, initially, I was thinking two fifth graders, and I told you guys this on last episode, but you guys. Like the whole last episode, just like I don't think so. So I'm like, okay, fine. One sixth grader, one fifth grader, and it turned out to be two fifth graders. So you guys, You're wrong to doubt you. Wrong. <laughs> I was right. Yeah. You know, I was even wrong in my child smiles prediction. I actually thought, uh, I don't know. I f- I forgot what I thought, but I I think I thought Miku was the least possible choice to enter. I think. Actually, no. I forget. I forget what I thought. Maybe I thought Miku was second most because she was the winner of the child editions and we tend to get a lot of the winners i think i think <laughs> yeah but anyway why no sixth graders i don't know ask ask the muse anyway let's introduce the transfer ins so uh first off we have miku tanaka miku who is wow she's 10 years old um she's from the Oita Prefecture in Japan, clearly. Her favorite food, Hamburg steak and fruits. Um, she's 150 centimeters tall, which is actually, fun fact, five centimeters shorter than me. So I'm 19 years old, and she's about to be, wait, she's going to surpass my height. And she's not even the tallest in Sakura. Anyway, um, she likes to spend her day by playing with friends, relaxing, and and relaxing at home. She compares herself to a dog. Um, <laughs> one dream she has is she wants to stop time. She likes peaches. Who doesn't? Um, and yeah, she she was the winner of the 2016 uh, Child Girls Grand Prix. And on stage, she said, I wasn't nervous backstage, and I'm not nervous now. I've never done singing and dancing, but she will do her best. Yeah, um, in turn, going a little, over a little of the stuff, her, and this is just what's on her SG profile page, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, this is just what's going on uh, on her SG profile page. Go, but, uh, going over some of the stuff, her height, she's actually really tall or pretty tall for an SG member. Like, if you, if you watch the transfer in ceremony, next to the next, next to the second transfer in, she was like a titan compared yeah. to the second chance for in like dang she was tall <laughs> so so she does have like a possibility of overgrowing ivana and the other sg members by the time she graduates oh it's not hard to overtake me i'm only 155 centimeters i know but still still that, that face on metric like you're american <laughs> yeah i'm american too man it's fine well this is the asian height so i, I expect nothing less uh, also, fun fact, um, Oita Prefecture is towards South Japan near Kumamoto, which, if you know Shima Yuika, that's where she is originally from. So that's further south of Japan. Oh, I, I, thought, you, I thought when you said Shima, Shima Yuika, you, you said it like really fast with no space. So I thought that was another place. And I was like, I don't know where that place is. <laughs> why, are you just, 
why are you, why are you telling me this? But then I noticed that it was actually Yuiko. I was like, oh, okay. Respect. Um, uh, you all mentioned that an animal she compares herself to is, is a dog. And she, there's actually a little skit when they were introducing her, saying that she really loved her dog. And Kano did this thing where she, like, kind of played f- to have her dog. <laughs> it's like, please, give me your dog. Give me your dog. Give me your dog. And it was kind of amusing. I shouldn't give away a dog. Because she would never give it away. <laughs> yeah, my, I, would, I would love to go to Shishima you get to. <laughs> well, Shima does mean island. Oh, let's go to Eureka Island, man. Um, Americans in the chat, and in comparison, I'm 5'1". Miku is probably 5 foot, so there you go. Yo, that's pretty tall for a kid. 5 foot. <laughs> I like how I'm like, now I'm like even more surprised once I know the American <laughs> size. Yeah, 5 foot, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty good for a kid. <laughs> Yeah, I'm five uh, one. So that's pretty bad for a teen, for an almost adult. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, any you guys have anything else to say about Miku so far? I can't believe a Vocaloid has joined Soccer Airplane. I never thought it would come to this. Aside from the memes, uh, one last thing I wanted to say is there is a quote from her saying, "I wasn't nervous backstage, and I'm not nervous now." I've never done singing and dancing, but I will do my best. Um, about the first part, although she said she wasn't nervous, she was, she was really nervous. nervous. She was, yeah, like, you can just tell she was super nervous. Yeah. Um, and it was apparent, too. It, I just thought that was really uh, kind of funny how um, you'll see next how the personalities kind of clash a little bit. She's a tall person saying that she's not nervous, but she actually was nervous, uh, compared to the other person, which we'll describe now. Yeah, so she she came out of arson and uh, was followed out by um, a tiny ball of energy uh, called Miki, Miki Yagi, uh, who is our second, uh, second transfer in. And uh, as Frankie uh, sort of hinted at there, uh, in many ways, is uh, in many ways was a uh, sort of an opposite to Miku. She's uh, quite small, and um, she seemed quite she seemed quite calm, quite confident uh, to a point. Anyway, I think she, she could tell she was nervous as well, but um, but she came through a bit a bit clearer, um, clearer than Miku. So, um, to let you know a little bit about her. She's also ten um, years old, um, and is from. The Osaka Prefecture. Um, she's 137.5 centimeters, apparently. Um, she likes to play the piano. And her favorite color is lilac. Uh, she likes playing dodgeball. Uh, she spends her days off doing homework, so she's obviously a studious individual, which ties in to um, one of her other skills, which they demonstrated during her intro, um, as she's another um, another member who's quite good with English and she ended up having a wee uh, fun back and forth with Marine um, uh, where uh, uh, Moni Simpson uh, asked Marine to, to ask her a question um, so Marine asked her what she would do if she was attacked by aliens while she was sleeping um, to which she quite cutely said that she would hide under the desk um, her English seemed really good as well but as um, also impressive, given uh, how how young she is. So I'll be quite interested to see if they make you know if they make it, make use of that, um, which is what I was hinting at earlier on when we were talking about song for smiling, as the the wee dis- discrepancy, if you like, between Marine singing on her own and everyone else. They could maybe boost that by having her join in with Marine on the English lines, which might help with that a little bit. But it'd be really good okay. if. Uh, we, we got a little bit more out of the two of them, um, English-wise. I think it, we've all kind of been hoping to get a little bit more out of Marine since she did, displayed her skills, um, but we've not had a huge amount from it, but who knows, maybe that will change. But anyway, uh, what else have we got here? So her favourite dish in her lunchbox 
is uh, tamagoyaki. Um, she likes it a non-sweet version. She also likes eating strawberries, which is one of the questions uh, she was asked during the show. And um, she was asked, uh, our uh, profile also has something that's uh, one thing that is non-negotiable or what, one thing you must have. Um, and she said, neat tooth alignment. So uh, don't introduce her to Sue. Um, yeah, and, and again, the opposite to, to Miku, her, one of her quotes um, that she said was that she felt she was so nervous that she might die. Um, but as I said, she seemed much she, although you, you could tell she was nervous, but she seemed uh, she seemed much sort of more um, immediately outgoing and and uh, answer things a bit quicker and things than uh, than Miku did. So she didn't she didn't seem quite as nervous. So if anything, their quotes could have been reversed. Um, and we also got a bit of a, a Ken Dama battle between her and Maya. Um, that's obviously one of Maya's. Uh, Specialties, um, as they mentioned um, during the show as well, that's obviously part of our intro now in uh, Meza Se Super Lady. Um, so they had a wee Kendama battle, which Mickey was a judge to have won as well. So there's a wee bit of an odd moment with that one because she sort of did her trick and everyone just seemed to stop for a second as if kind of frozen oh. before, event, before eventually everyone was like, well, right, yeah, 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 okay, can get a round of applause and everything else, but. Uh, yeah, so that was that was Mickey's intro. Uh, what did what did you guys think? Uh, I actually had a lot, a lot to say about Mickey's. Um, like the, someone mentioned in chat, what, what, what it's, what's the color lilac? I was also be, I was also mm. like, what lilac? But it is basically lilac. Like lilac. Lilac. Sorry, lilac. Oh, sorry, lilac. It's basically okay. the color of lilac, which is like. It's basically the color of the flower lilac, which is purplish. Um, Perry game dodgeball. That was surprising. That was surprising. Uh, also, about these, fun. Why is it surprising? Yeah, it, it's fun, but she's like the smallest girl like ever. Okay. So yes. I, thought, I thought it was surprising. Maybe maybe it's easy for her to escape. That's why. To dodge. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also, uh, I, maybe I should mention this. Maybe uh, I feel like a lot of us would know what these Japanese foods are, but maybe you guys don't know what certain Japanese far foods are uh, tamago, tamago yaki, which literally just means like fried or grilled egg. It's like a roll up egg omelet thing in, in Japan that they quite often eat. It's like the thing you see on sushi sometimes, the yellow egg thing on top of rice. That's technically tamago yaki, but except it's chilled. And usually it's sweet, but apparently she likes it non-sweet. And back to uh, Miku Seder fruit, which is Hamburg steak. It's literally, a hamburger patty and then it's served like yes yeah, steak yeah served as a steak it's, li it's just literally a hamburger patty with like some gravy on top usually served over rice i think right yeah um yeah so that, that's your intro to japanese food if you don't know what some of this, these dishes are <laughs> japanese food 101 brought to you by the fuke hanger i also want to mention that miki has braces um oh yeah yeah she yeah. does she does indeed and yeah, like I kind of mentioned to earlier, and Doug finished. She's like the total opposite of Miku. She's short, but she, to our eyes, or at least uh, she, my eyes, she seemed really confident. Although she said, "I'm nervous enough to die," she seemed really confident, challenging her seniors in multiple ways, such as um, uh, me, Mari in English, Maya in Kendama. And uh, about the dual thing with Marin, that, that'd be really interesting to see how... <laughs> Imagine another revised version of Song for Smiling in the next mm -hmm. album <laughs> would they include those two. <laughs> That's the only difference. They just want to do that and... That's the only that difference. That would be enough for Amuse. They, they, I'm sure they would they'd probably, they'd probably call it the English version. And then just yeah, the English version. <laughs> um, although, to note, her English is less uh, foreign. It does have more of a Japanese accent my opinion mm -hmm. uh, yeah so it's not what you would some people would deem as impressive or at least i would deem as impressive because you're using a japanese accent and the thing about mine's english which made her impressive in my opinion was that she used a very american accent which She's stood out very specific pronunciation man you know, I'm, I'm like so interested to know and we'll probably never find out you know how 
where her English comes from originally. Yeah, because it's very, I think it's very particularly pronounced. We won't go really, we won't go far too far into this, but one of the reasons why I think a lot of people think she, think why I think that a lot of people think that Mari is really good at English is because of the accent. Like I personally don't think that Mari is really good at English, but I think the accent makes her seem like it. And we're not going to go already, into this. We're not going to go into. We're not going to go more into this. Frankie, so we've already confirmed right that you hate Marin, so your opinions <laughs> are valid on this. Yeah, confirmed that I hate Marin. Confirmed that I hate Marin. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> confirmed that you I hate all thought, hair. I actually that I hate all pronunciation hair. was pretty good as well. Uh, oh yeah, it, 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 like yeah, I, I thought well, it was pretty good. It just she, she definitely like you say she's definitely um, got more of the the Japanese pronunciation to it, but it was very clear. Um, which I thought was pretty good, and some of the some of the harsher, harder sort of N sounds that you often find kind of round off when spoken in a Japanese accent um, were clearer with her as well. Yeah. Frankie, can I ask you a question? What? How can Marin be good at an accent if she's not good at the language? Uh, <laughs> it's just a man manipulation of voice. I feel like I can do some accents pretty well, even though I'm not good at the language. You can be good at doing a certain kind of voice, even if you're not good at the language. Voice has nothing to do, to do with how well you are at a certain language. It's just how well you can manipulate your voice to the certain standards of that particular sounding language or character voice. And actors do it all the time. They, they do certain turn character voices. <laughs> but back to my original point before I, I got into this whole uh, tangent was that mm -hmm. You mentioned the dual thing with uh, Marin and Miki with the English, but I think another good, good dual thing they can uh, incorporate into Miss Asa Super Lady is the Kendama battle, where since they both do Kendama pretty well or are able to do simple tricks, they can incorporate maybe a Kendama battle into Miss Asa Super Lady uh, near the end of the song. I think that'd be pretty interesting. That could be fun. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see. That, so I think the only thing I would maybe... Like, and this is perhaps what led to that sort of random pause because Mickey didn't actually do any tricks per se. Like, um, uh, okay. For anyone that didn't see, like Maya did, did the she sort of flipped it up onto one of the wee side cups, flipped her that around, and then spun the ball in a sort of a a circle, and then so, just sort of missed missed the last bit. But Mickey just did the the classic spin the ball and get it to land on the the spike in the whole bit, which is the sort of the standard trick. So I'm not, it'd be interesting to see what else she can do uh, with that. I have a little point against that. Although I'm not a Kendama expert and or nowhere near to one. Um, yeah, Maya's trick was way more flashy because it did the spin spin and then the swing into the catch, which she failed. Mm -hmm. I felt like Miki's trick wasn't super basic. Uh, she actually spun the ball which if you don't know how Kendama works, the ball has a certain place where the hole is. So by spinning it and then throwing it, I feel like it makes it harder to land into the stick. So I felt like it did have some degree of difficulty. It just wasn't it's as a, flashy. It's actually the other way around. It's the spinning it that makes it easier to get it into the hole. That's the trick. If you don't spin it, it's virtually impossible. It's the way that the, it's the, way the physics works because when you... With the hole in the in the ball, if you just if you just have the ball and you just throw it up, then the ball will twist and turn around, and, and basically you'll you've got zero control over where that hole is. Whereas if you spin it, because you create a, that as it, um, I'll get my physics terms wrong here probably, but I think it's, it's sort of the centrifugal force of the spin. It means that it spins around the axis of that hole, and therefore when you do the upward motion the axis stays still and keeps that upwards and therefore you can get it to land on your wee spike. I, I've just been debunked. I just been <laughs> I've just been said called wrong. But I do have a second reason to try to keep my side of flowers. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that was a little physics lesson for those of you who wanted a lesson. It's an educational show lesson. as well as yeah, yeah, so. yeah. This is a very <laughs> educational show. Uh, I, I have a second reason. Out. Oh, well okay. Good luck in your phys next physics exam. Then. Well, um, but my second reason me. is. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Just... Well, you're, you're getting it. Just, just, just go on for me. Oh, okay. Uh, my second reason was because Maya failed, 
she didn't need to do a, a really outstanding trick that she might have missed. So she just did the really simple trick. <laughs> I think, I think, she, cause I think she called it the, I'm not sure if, um, I'm not sure if she meant the specific trick or if she was just talking about Kendama in general, but she did call it um, Maya's specialty um, just before. So as I said, I'm not 100% if that was, if she was just talking about Kendama or if it was about that particular trick. But, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, it's fun, though. Um, I'd, like to see them, I'd like to see them do it again. Yeah, definitely. I really like that idea of the, let's say, the, the battle in, uh, in Mezuse, actually. What they should what they should do is have those two battling and then have Mickey and Marion doing color commentary in English over the top. There we go. Oh, Combine oh. it all into a mega oh. thing. <laughs> oh. That uh, Damn, the evolution of Misasa Super yeah. Lady. Hashtag things that will never happen. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but yeah, um the new members are really really interesting. I uh I like them right now. I I like them. Yeah, I'm quite excited to see. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by Miku because I feel like I feel as if we didn't see everything that she'll have to offer. Because like she, she, as we've said, she seemed very shy um, or, or nervous. Whereas Miki, while still nervous, was quite was a you know she was very smiley, interacted a lot. As you say, she's sort of challenging our seniors and everything else. So she, I, I feel as if a lot of people probably will have taken to her quite quickly. Um, so I, I think she'll probably have a lot of fans early doors, but, um, yeah, I'm really excited to see. In fact, Ivana, did you not do a, a Twitter poll? Um, on about, what? On who, who people were liking. Oh, yeah. Um, vote now on your phone. It's over. Um, but yeah, <laughs> if you're Team Miku or Team Mickey. Uh, we can, we can actually do it right oh. now on the post, on, on the, on the house, uh, show right now. But before oh, yeah. that, I want to know who won the poll. On your Twitter thing, Team yeah. Mickey by a lot. Oh, okay. That's that's kind of what I expected. Mickey. Yeah, I think, um, as I say, I think a lot of people will have taken to her based on their her. As a, I'll read you the result right now. Just and find it. Just give me a second. Okay, out of twenty-four votes, um, seventy-one percent Team Mickey. Dang, seventy-one percent. So that's like, let's see, um, twenty-four, twelve. Um, 18, 17 votes, I think, like 17. I think that's like, it's like 17 out of 24. Sounds around. Sounds around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was watching it live, and most people that I was talking with seemed to really like Miki more, but I'm actually more of a Team Miku right now. Uh, I, I don't know. I just, I, I, she's, she, she's won my heart more over more than Miki. I, I have, I have to add then. It's like mildly off topic, but the chat are starting to to post um, their team ones and and missing real. I have to put a shout out to that because missing real is I'm team. Where the fuck is the logo of replacement? <laughs> <laughs> I, Amuse response. Yeah, I, I think we're all. I think we can all get behind that team. But um, yeah, it seems fairly balanced in the chat. Though a couple of Mikis, Miku mentioned as well. Uh, we've got one, bra one. Uh, I'm bring, I'm team bring back Oga. <laughs> bring back every other, bring back every graduate, right? Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot to do this thing. Um, no, oh, okay, let's, 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 let's talk say about, who, who, um... oh, <laughs> we still need to see who you guys, who you guys are in favor of. And then one more thing about transferring. Who, who do you guys like? I, I say I like Miku. She just attracts me, like, she, she speaks closer to my heart than Miki does. Um, of course you like. What about you? You're 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 anti modern. What was I even? That has no correlation, but you're anti modern. Well, no, there's a there's a link. He's obviously anti English. Okay, okay, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No. 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 There's no limit. Oh, are you okay? If I, obviously, mine is, is Team Miki. I actually, you, I had a very tough time choosing when watching Miki. Oh, really? Yeah. But for now, I'm going to have to go with Miki because she's so small and cute and mm. I'm shorter than me by a lot. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> so like taller than her. Same. Uh, okay, Doug. Okay, you, you make the stream a Miki 
preferred stream or Miku preferred stream? Although I think I know the answer. Drum roll. Um, well, I mean, they've obviously they've both got both got good qualities. As I say, I'm very intrigued by Miku because I feel as if I didn't get to see, as I say, everything coming from her. So I'm quite interested to to see her. She reminded me a lot. Um, she reminded me a lot of Renon actually, um, because she's got that kind of a wide, narrow smile and these ginormous Sue-like ears. But um, but yeah, as it stands, I have to declare myself Team Mickey. Uh, as I say, she's, uh, she she just had she uh, echoing of what Ivana said. She's kind of small and adorable, and she has um, a really nice smile, and she seemed just really fun um, on the show. She had that kind of eighty side ponytail going on as well, which was fun. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to declare Team Mickey for now, but intrigued to see more from Miku. So there you have it, guys. I can't say I didn't expect that. <laughs> but we're, we're, we're a Miki preferred stream as for now. But uh, you mentioned something that I want to get to. You said she had a certain hairstyle and I need to comment on- Frankie, you best hurry <laughs> about this. Okay, I know I best, I best hurry. But uh, Miki's hair, I, I thought was really nice. It, it's actually my favorite hair I've seen from her so far. I didn't really like the braid thing on her. I think it was okay, but maybe the makeup made me not like it. I don't know, something, I think something about the makeup was like off for me. I don't, I don't like darker makeup. I think she has work wearing darker makeup in her pictures. So maybe not really like the hairstyle that much. But I thought this hairstyle that she had with the um, the back tie thing kind of sp and the rest of the hair springing out was my favorite so far. Uh, Miki's was interesting. Um, it was like a point out to the side. And then during this or, or, uh, stream, it looked really straight. So it looked like the side like fin of a fish to me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was interesting. Why is she Nemo now? Like... No, her her, her, her friend was big. Nemo's friend is small. Finding Mickey. Finding Mickey. Yeah, where is she? She's so small. All finding things. Nemo, finding Dory, finding Mickey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, we, <laughs> that's enough for me. Okay, that's enough for the trans. Move, moving on. Yeah, the ne the other big news from the ceremony. So, uh, as you might know from my Twitter or. Just me in general. I am an Ico enthusiast. And this what? year I am too. is Ico's presidency. All hail Ico. Eh. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> You're officially I'm just, fired. I'm just, ba I'm just balancing out. Uh, the drops in the stream right now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I, I have nothing against Ico. Uh, I've never... I have no strong feelings either way, to be honest, about Ico. I don't know why. I've never, I've never uh, hugely liked nor disliked her. Why She's does no one like Aiko? The reason I, I like Aiko. to like Aiko was because no one else would. Because you I liked, I liked are, her before. Before you liked her, y'all are, you're like crazy. What do you mean? There's no one li I liked. I like Aiko. Okay. <laughs> what? Yeah, but you don't like Martin, so that, that balances it out. <laughs> this what? Okay, okay, whatever. Okay. Any anyway, Ico got president. Okay. No 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 big no surprise. surprise here. No surprise there. But the other it, it, positions. Anyone who thought maybe was gonna get president, you can fight me. I did think it was quite cute when they did Ico's announcement though. She she seemed quite excited about it all. Um Yeah. She gave out she kinda good. gave out a Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> and I, I, I having having uh, said what I said a second ago. I, I would add, I, I've quite enjoyed Eichel's, um sort of arc as she's gotten older. I feel that she's developed quite well, um, similar to similar to Olga for me in many ways. She was kind of like small and shy, but a bundle of energy. But and then has kind of tempered that energy to become more focused as she's gotten older. I think um, I'm quite excited. I, I am excited to see how the year goes with President Eichel. So. Yeah, Aiko has had some interesting character developments uh, over the years, especially the last two, maybe even three years. Um, and as response to Gabriel Time One Two Two Six, he said, "No way, Aiko was actually surprised she was president, right?" Um, I don't think it was more of a surprise. I think it was more of a nervous relief. Yeah, kind of thing. I think she's just excited to be named president. I think it's. It's obviously an honor for them, so. Yeah, and like, 
uh, SG has been known to do some weird stuff and you know like things were up in the question and she also messed up her line so that I really got her nervous as well you know like n no way she like like 95 percent sure I'm pretty sure she was like 95 percent sure she was gonna get present but like that like small percentage that you just might not get it for some reason like was like clinging to her heart and I feel yeah. pretty sure that's what got her but once that was announced it's like oh huh Kind of yeah, I mean, I, I would, I would liken it to. It's probably a similar feeling to, you know, if you've like won a race or something, and you're you're getting a medal, you know, you kind of you know you've won, but you've still got that anticipation and excitement, you know, before they sort of give you your trophy or whatever. So I, I kind of got that kind of feeling. You know, she knew the she she knew the moment was coming, but she's still excited and nervous about it, and it's still like a oh my when it gets you know actually announced and like that, sort of right. becomes real and becomes official. So, yeah, that, so that, that was obvious, but the other ones were a bit surprising. We had Maggie was talk chairman. That mm. wasn't surprising at all, actually, in my opinion. Uh, to me, it wasn't surprising either, but uh, I, I heard from other people that they were actually really surprised. To me, that wasn't surprising, but I heard from other people that they were actually really surprised that Maggie was talk chairman. And I thought it was the obvious role that they were going to give her. Yeah, I thought I, it was those, obvious. Those two are the obvious roles, I, in my opinion. In my onion. I don't. I don't think it was necessarily surprising that she got that position. Whether she's necessarily the best person for it is another question. Oh yeah, that that's a different a question. I don't think it's a surprise though. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Though. Like, I didn't think it was a surprise, but yes, I, you can argue that Maggie was not the best person, as even she said that she doesn't like. Uh, talking, or or, or it, was, it was either she said she didn't like talking, or that she felt like she wasn't good at talking. One of those. Mm. I think it, it could be one of those things where you choose someone who needs a bit of development in in a certain area to try and help push them. Um, oh yeah. I think, I think I think they do that. You know, they they amused do 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 that. Um, they did that with Yunano when when they made her, um, when they had her in. Uh, Kobaibu. Yeah. And, and I think they comment more with they commented, And they commented on that when they uh they commented on that when, when she graduated as well, you know, that you know specifically put her in those roles because he wanted to improve those skills because she was no good at them to begin with. Um so it'll be interesting to see how she gets on. I personally think she's gonna do fine. Like it's gonna be more Yeah. I think the, the okay. I think she might falter a little bit in the comedic section of the job, probably. Mm -hmm. I think so. But when it comes to the really deep emotional speeches, I think she actually does a really good job because the the ending speech she kind of gave, or like the speech she kind of gave when she got the role, was pretty good, mm -hmm. in my opinion. It sounded really deep and um to the heart. Yeah. So I, I think she'll excel in those. You have um, thoughts on Megu talk, Chairman? I think she said she she uh she was she was fine with it, but uh we can, cause that wasn't really much surprise. But the other two, the other two. Yeah, well, one big surprise, and 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 that we've got a brand new position. What the uh, hell was, is the Gambare chairman? I was so what triggered. Is that? By this what position. Like, I'm assuming. I mean, I'm I'm assuming it's similar to. The spirit role that uh, that uh, Hinata and uh, ha Hannah got. Hannah have had in so the past. Like I'm the assuming it's basically the same thing. It's just got a new name. So encourage like, people. That, that's not that's not my problem with with, with it. Like I, I get the same role as they had before, but why why that name? There could have been so many other names, like Genki or Kanji or. <laughs> Could have been so many kanji, kanji, like feeling, like feeling, feeling. I don't. I think you would use okay. You know. <laughs> okay, fine. I, okay, I think. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I checked you. Also, you gave a su suggestion of kimochi. I don't think that works. I don't think that's a good one either. <laughs> I don't think that's a good one. I don't think. That's I'm gonna say good. bye to Missing Rio. Bye, Missing Rio. Oh, bye, Missing. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. 
either, either, I don't know, anyway. I think gam- gamma is one of those things, I think it's one of those words that's all over the place in Japan, so I think I think I would assume that's the, the reason behind oh. it. It's the choice. Um and obviously I mean they've used it they've used it for things before, like Logar they had Gambare Corner and stuff like that. So I think it's just a continuation of that. Yeah, but uh one last thing. Um sorry, I thought Austin was trying to think of another word, but he was, he was actually trying to guess what I was trying to say. Because my word sounded wrong. But yeah. He didn't say that. He just kind of thinking of another word. Kokoro chairman, heart chairman? I don't know. Maybe. Anyway, the last position. Uh, yes. Education chairman. Provided a very, very controversial discussion. Yes. <laughs> so for anyone who may or may, may not know, Maya was uh, is elected the right word, elected, chosen to be education chairman this year, um, which seems to have caused some... Um, Normal and heated debate in various places. What were the what were the thoughts on that? Um. Okay, so there is some speculations because of a line said. First of all, it was really surprising to most of us that a fifth grader, or not second fifth grader, sorry, <laughs> second grader, wow, even got a position this year, because <laughs> usually. Second, second grader positions are only given when there's a shortage of seniors, which there wasn't this year. And so it was really surprising to almost all of us, that, or I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure like all of us actually, that she got a position in general. And then here came the debate of whether I think Maya deserved it, Maya deserved it. And a certain line kind of sparked even more controversy as Kumamoto said, I, would, I had someone else in mind to give this to but we said to give it to you. And I have, in my, in my mind, there's three things that come out of that. He either, he was thinking of three people. He is either thinking of uh, Megu, who is known for a smart person. So he could have gave, you know, education mm-hmm. chairman, smart person, could have been that. But in my opinion, education par- chairman is someone who is not, not, not so smart, who needs to educate both themselves and other people. You can kind of see that in 2015, where Oga mm. got education chairman and not Shirai. Because if you're t- you take it from, you should give it to the smart person basis, then Shirai would have gotten 25, but she didn't. So I don't think Megu makes sense. The other person that he could have been mentioning um, was Momoko, because Momoko is indeed not the smartest of the seniors there. And she could have also taken on that role um, equally as much as Maya could have by also being not that educated and uh, learning stuff so she can educate the new members as well. And then the last person, which everyone kind of assumed or kind of thought was Marin, which could have been, but it could have not been. You don't, you'll never know. I think, eh. Okay, in my opinion, this could go two ways for next Nendo. Um, it either means one, they're prepping Maya for either her presidency or so that she can take on a better role next year. Even though they believe Maya is not qualified for education chairman, they they probably have something else saved for Martin because of course they would have considered Martin for something if they considered Maya for something. Yeah. So there's still like a little bit of hope for Marian presidency, but it, it it could go both ways. But this is 2017. This is Aiko's year. <laughs> Let's focus on that. Yeah, I, mean, I think I think we we want to we want to be worried about reading too much into what it means for next year. I think to me it's it to me it sounds or it comes across as this is one of those examples of them choosing someone who they're trying to improve or they're trying to um get this person to realize you know you know we want more from you and we think you can do more and so they're giving them a position to try and bring that out so i think maya to me is someone that has a lot of potential but is perhaps one of those ones where uh, similar to example given before with Oga who's maybe been a bit more 
up until now it's just been a more of a fun kind of character someone that's been a bit more relaxed laid back and and i think they maybe want to try and bring her, her out her more responsible side and so they've they've given her a, a position to do that because i think if anything when with maya and momoko if you were to pick out of the two positions they were given i would perhaps argue that they would based on their base skills they would be better the other way around um but they've perhaps been given these positions to these specific positions to, to as i say to help you know bring more out of them i think um maya maybe needs a little bit more to try and give her you know a bit more seriousness or a bit more responsibility so that you know she can be so she can be better and i think that's maybe why they've given her that whereas marine they maybe don't think needs as much of that um as a as a push um she maybe if anything i think marine maybe needs to come out of her shell a little bit more um which i don't think maya has a problem with and then it might be easier for her to do that without the responsibility of having a, a council position yeah well, that's yeah it, it's yeah i, I just I, I agree with that we shouldn't go that much into it right now to see how things play out and we'll we'll see by we'll see like in, a, in about an end of its time okay we'll see we'll see yeah. The excitement um, of the year. Watch how it all unfolds. Yeah, and after that, after all the chairman and transfer uh, excitement, did one more song. Talk about some merch, uh, and that was basically the transfer and ceremony. It was good. I like that we got the transfer and ceremony again. Yeah. Um. We didn't get it last year, did we? No. No, that we skipped last year. Uh, 2015, we didn't we didn't have the audition video, but we got transfer and ceremony. Last year, we got the audition video, but didn't have transfer and ceremony. But this year, we got best of both worlds, transfer and ceremony, and audition video, which is where we're going to get into because they actually released one this time. And uh, hurrah! Hurrah! It was really good. <laughs> <laughs> hurrah for things! Hurrah for things, indeed. We might or might not have it up on the screen. Uh, soon, maybe, not sure. Uh, <laughs> if it does, enjoy. If it doesn't, uh, oh, I'm getting a message that we are getting it on screen. So, I thought this was a really good audition video, this one. They seemed quite on point. Yeah. In comparison to some of the earlier ones. Again, the thing that stood out to me was they're, they're quite in sync. Um, some of the other ones I've seen, they're a little bit less, so it's good. <laughs> Definitely. And usually the fun that comes with these audition videos is that you can kind of try to guess who the faces are by looking at them. But mm. this time, you really kind of couldn't, because if you were keeping up with news, you would have realized or you would have known that they actually got leaked somehow. And this was spread out, um, spread out, spread out through the, throughout the entire news of SG World, baby. Oh, well, maybe not baby metal world, but SG World definitely. You, if you were on the Reddit, you were someone. You heard about it. You knew who the transfer is. You saw it, and it was really bad. It um, probably won't ever happen again. Um, and it was just really that, bad to happen. That person year. will be fired. Yeah, that person will be fired. <laughs> and and they actually had released an apology. And they said they're really sorry that they uh, did it. Hopefully, they won't do it again. Some people kind of like the tr the leaks, but uh, hopefully, they don't, they don't do it again. Because I kind of like guessing. I kind of like waiting to see who gets it. But um, hopefully, they just don't do it again. And um, there is some, you know, graduate attendances. They, uh, we saw some pictures with Maridi, Inano, Hinata, Reno, and then one more person. Who we couldn't really figure out. People um, people think it's Rauda, but there's no confirmation yet. Because I feel like Rauda would have posted on her Twitter if she went. Yeah. May, yeah, maybe you guys can give us some of your thoughts in the uh, chat right there. See who you think it was. Uh, and new, yeah, new, new Child Small song coming up. Song for you. Get hyped for that. <laughs> no, uh, no, really, not much really other information for now besides some merch detail. Uh, get hyped, get hyped. 
And yeah, that's it for Sakura Gakuen. What about graduates? Let's let's blaze through this. Doug, go. Uh, well, baby metal. Um, our big graduates. The uh, couple of random things have obviously been on tour. There's been a lot of uh, new footage and stuff like that with the stuff with the chili peppers. That's now done. Um, which is sad. So hopefully we'll get more news about that shortly. But um, the big baby metal news is actually technically not baby metal news in that the um, the Kami band released an EP. Um, or the Kari band, as uh, the EP is under. Uh, so if anyone uh, highly recommend you go and grab that, it's really interesting. It's got a mix of you know a lot of this, the skills that the the band have. Um, it's got uh, it's a little bit lighter than the baby metal stuff, but I uh, highly recommend giving it a listen. Um, it's quite intricate and jazzy. Some of it's kind of a bit more chilled as well. Um, yeah, it's really cool to see them getting a getting some, a lot of people have talked about them getting more recognition and things. And, and this is obviously something that they've been able to do as a result of uh, being together uh, as a group. So yeah, you can get that on all the major outlets, iTunes and Amazon, etc. So if you have some spare cash and some spare time, I highly recommend um, picking that up. It's a, it's a really good lesson. And as for other graduates, we have some uh, news from the usual graduates as of recently. Um, mm -hmm. Ayaka uh, has been showing up on a few more uh, YouTube video things. They're not exactly YouTube videos, but you can find them on YouTube. She hosted the Abema TV show with another star who I don't recognize. <laughs> Sorry, if you recognize her, I don't recognize her. And it was a lot, it was just, uh, the show was amazing, them eating stuff and looking at videos and commenting about them. So if you want to give it a quick watch, you can go ahead and do that if, if you're interested in those kind of things. She also visited the Fendi Public Shop, which is a um, clothing fashion shop. It's a little video about that. Um, it was Ayami's birthday recently. She had some tweets about that. Um, anything significant that you guys want to mention for uh, Ayami's? I don't know if you guys read it, read some of them. Nothing, nothing specific. Yeah, uh, I didn't, I nothing know. specific besides but the picture with the bottle, upside down bottle thing with the little red contraction thing was kind of interesting. In my, uh, I think like, now. Well, that's about it. Well, no, I just thought like the pouring mechanic was kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, I really also had a new lot, lotte, lotte, or lot, lotte, lot commercial. Go check that out. And of course, we also, we always have some Hinata news. As for Hinata news, she's in a new show. Uh, I think it's called um, oh yeah, Shoujo Kageki Review Starlight. Um, it's a new anime slash musical project. Um, she plays one of the characters. Um, you can check out her Twitter for more of that. She compares, she wears like cosplay for her character. Um, but yeah, uh, recently she tweeted two things. Um, so last night, in Megu's diary, there's a cute sleeping picture of Yuzumi, and Hinata tweeted about it, saying that it kind of looks like her. So, if you think it looks like her, leave us a comment. Um, and lastly, she said, just, just one tweet that st stood out to me, um, Hinata's in uni university now, and she's taking English classes. And one of her teachers said, long time ago, in English, but she thought it's they said long tamago, which basically means long egg. So I thought that was really funny. And that's it from Hinata. Some shout outs for birthdays that recently passed. Ayami, 21, Nene, who turned 19, and also Mayuna, who turned 19. Happy birthday or happy late birthday, guys. And yeah, so well answer your questions that you send in. Uh, Kyle yeah. Farrell asks, what do you want to see this Nendo? Focus more on songs or do you do some more experiment experimentation like the play and such? For me, I want more songs. Yeah, I was going to say, does he mean new songs? Because if he means that, then definitely. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he means new songs. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, going to go the greedy answer. I want to see both. See I think both. they can do both. I think they can easily. I think they can easily do both. 
I'm I'm really disappointed with last year that a lot of people well, they didn't exactly say it themselves, but a lot of people were assuming that they didn't do new songs because they were busy with play. I think that's ridiculous. I think they can do both. Um, I can think I think they can experiment while doing new songs, and I want to see that. But if I had to choose one, just give us some new songs, man. Just give us some new songs. To tie in with another an an earlier question from a Frosty Guitarist, he says, "Do you think it's in Amuse's best interest to offer streaming of shows?" Um, first of all, I would answer that question with yes. Um, I think streaming is a, a great way to get your content out there, um, as well as offering it worldwide. Although they do seem to not necessarily be doing that. Uh, I believe, and do correct me if I'm wrong, but. I believe the uh, stream of the transfer uh, ceremony was actually uh, region locked, unless you knew ways around it. But um, to fit it, to fit that question and the answer to that question with the other one, um, one of the things I would like to see is uh, something that's going to replace the void left by Low Girl being um, closed down. So I would like to see them doing something new um, or something similar on another platform so that we can continue to get that type of um that type of thing i i agree for the most part either a new new streaming service or go back to the old ways of like let's say 2013 where you they just had a lot of tv appearances sure they, could, yeah. they could go online live like that's a thing that exists like most idols do <laughs> most idols do actually do go online live <laughs> they're just really they're choosing to ignore line live right now in my i mean yeah, who who knows what she thinks? Who know, who who knows how their brain works? Uh, <laughs> I, I'm did kinda, you see I mean, the leaks? Did you guys see the transfer in leaks? When yes. Was... Yes, they were kind of put in my. They face, were kind but... of shoved into my face. <laughs> I I I'll be honest. I probably would have looked at them had even had that not happened. Um, to be fair, but uh, yeah. I'm kind of in agreement with just thinking about what we we're saying about streaming and stuff. There, I mean, I, I, I'm with Frankie on the fact that you know, I think they can do more, and I see no reason why they can't come up with a new show. It's ridiculously easy. I mean, you've got, you know, we we put on a monthly show for two hours, um, and we are neither a multinational corporation nor even in the same room. Um, so I'm sure they can manage to put on a weekly podcast or their own show or appear on some other things. So to not do anything, I feel would be lazy. Yeah, and as some and some people mentioned in the chat, there are multiple TV services or like not TV services, streaming services that they can sign a contract with, and it's just if they want to do it or not. Yeah. But I mean, it's the fact that they, you know they wouldn't even need they don't even need contracts or anything. You know they, they can sign up to various services if they want, but there's also a hundred and one ways they could do it on their own without needing to do anything other than have a camera and an, the internet, which I'm fairly yeah, sure you would have at the at this stage. <laughs> okay, two more questions. What should we name the Nachi Bot on Discord? So if you're not in the Discord chat from Reddit, um, there's a lot of bots in the Discord chat. One of them is called the Nachi Bot, and they're trying to rename it. So, what do you think we should rename it? Nachi Bot. No idea. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I'm not creative to answer your, your question. <laughs> Someone's asked what we think will happen to Sleep Peace. It'll stay, and we'll get, we'll get a new member. Uh, I guess we can talk a little bit about. Where we think the clubs are going to, what direction the clubs are going to? Someone's uh, going to join Logica, and it's going to be Miku. No. <laughs> why, why Miku? Just because. Just because. I, 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 okay. I think that the answer is pretty obvious. They're most likely going to continue Sleep Peace and Logica. And they're finally they're finally going to put Yuzumi in a club, and they also put Momo in a club, because there's only sp uh, two spots, and there's only two um, veteran members, 
Yes, if, you, if you've been in one year in SU, you're a veteran member. There's only two veteran members that don't have a club, and they'll mostly be put in those clubs. Should I, can, can I talk about like my predictions that I made on Twitter, if anyone saw that? Okay, talk about them. Um, so on Twitter, I made like a prediction thread, and some people replied to it, which is cool. But basically, I just made a list of things that I thought was going to happen this year. So number one was the first song will be similar to Hana Hana or Mathematica. Oh, you're talking about set list prediction. No, well, no, not set list. Like, like, like song prediction. Yeah, yeah. So like just oh. it, this year in general. So, yeah. Well, it's, so, it's obvious, right? Because we you get the learning song. No, no, not generally learning, but similar in sound. Oh, wait, you're talking about similar. Okay. Okay, number two was um, Aiko would get most of the lines, of course, but Maya and Modern will surprisingly get more lines than Momoko and Nexus. I think Momoko's going to get a good amount of lines. I think Momoko's I, 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 I can see Mari and Maya getting more lines than Megu, but I, we're, like, it's like an ID and Sue situation, but I don't think she's getting more lines than, or they're getting more lines than Momoko. Okay. Um, Miki will surprise everyone with her goofy side, and Miku will surprise everyone with her smart side. And now, I, after reading their profiles, I'm going to have to switch this around. Uh, wait, what'd you say just now? <laughs> well, anyway, if you're not going to talk, I'm going to uh, go on about the clubs. Um, um, if they weren't going to take the safe route and just stick with Sleep, Peace, and Logica, I think they can go interesting and actually maybe bring back an old club like Twinkle Stars, or <laughs> or may, maybe not Scoopers, because uh, I think that'd be kind of weird having a two-person group. So I, I don't think it'd be Scoopers or um or the uh <laughs> the the wrestling club, but I think it'd be more of you know maybe Pastel Wind or Twinkle Stars, and I think that would open up a lot more possibilities. Because there's more members in Pastel Wind slash Twinkle Stars. Pastel Wind, you can include one extra member, which you could include one of the new students in, and that'd be really interesting to see. Or you can move some people around, and we'll see how the, that'd be even more interesting. You move people around. Or they could make it even more interesting with Twinkle Stars, because Twinkle Stars, you can either have five members like they did in 2014, or seven members like they did. 2010 slash 2011. <laughs> so the, the possibilities are endless if they actually decide to drop a club and bring back one of their old ones or even start a new one with more members. And if they were to drop one, I feel like the, the club they would drop would actually be Logica because I feel like Sleepies is more, the staple, is more of a staple than Logica is. Yeah. They've got more songs, more things to do. I think. Plus, with the, I think the, the thing is because they've made their whole. It was something I kind of I always thought actually because because they, they have their whole. The education songs, so they do each of those sort of songs. That 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 could have been a thing they could have given to Logica if they wanted it to be, a bigger brand or a bigger part of the thing that Logica could have done, songs about you know learning stuff um and i think that you know they kind of if they continue to do their, their education songs then logic is almost a duplication then so it, may, it would make sense for me to for them to drop that one but they seem to for whatever reason they seem to quite like it because it's obviously carried on but uh yeah like I, i'm like if you have even discussed this at one point in the uh, subreddit where they were trying to push logica at one point and it just didn't work out, but it has done well as a staple club, so that's why they'll most likely keep it. But you know, like we're talking, we're talking about ifs, and if they decide to bring a new club, Logica would most likely, in my opinion, be the one dropped, just because I don't mm. think it's as staple as Sleepy. Um, yeah. See, someone said, "What do you feel? What do you all feel about the price of RTG 2016?" Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, you guys didn't know the Blu-ray. I think it's just the Blu-ray. 
I think it was the Blu-ray for RTG is 10,000 yen. <laughs> 10,000 yen. Which is roughly... It's not 100 US dollars. It's, it's less than... That's like 100. That's more than 100 Australian dollars. Well, no one cares about Australian money. Um, <laughs> Burn. Oh. But it's like $88. And it's like 88 American dollars, which is a lot. It's a lot. For, for, for those who are not American, it's, it's about 68 pounds, 50. Okay, fine. <laughs> for those... <laughs> let's just convert it for everybody for, for people in Europe it's 80 euros 80, 80 or 81 euros okay and if you're from any other country when I doing conversions go check it out for yourself um, it's a lot for uh, SG merch more than we've come to expect it in comparison it's more like the price of a BM merch um, and I don't know do you guys think it's worth it like it comes with a documentary, but it's like what twenty dollars more than usual, right? Is it isn't it like twenty dollars more than usual? Um, uh, I think you know, I think it'd be kind of worth if the documentary was really, really, really good, because we did get documentary with um the album, the album, <laughs> the album for the um the back uh a behind the scenes of the festival, which was good. It was good, but a lot of it was just song playing, and I wish there was more talking. So if they do a documentary more along the lines of, I don't think it would be a long, I don't think they would ever do include a documentary that's as long as the Smile documentary. But if they did a longer documentary, like let's say like an hour, maybe hour thirty minutes, and it was a lot of talking and a lot of the emotions going on throughout the year, not just for like maybe RTG, but throughout the year and show some behind the scenes, maybe some of the concerts that we couldn't see that were like live audience, um, live audience exclusive. I think that'd be worth the uh, 10,000 yen. But if it's like a, if it's a documentary similar to the festival one, I don't think it would be worth it. What do you guys think? Yeah, I'd agree with that. Especially if you're, especially if you're purchasing it from abroad and you have shipping and everything else on top of that. I mean, one of, that's 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 one of the main reasons I own very little merch. Is I'm just not, uh, just not willing to pay for the ridiculous amounts of money that it costs to have things sent over. Oh, yeah. Uh, plus, plus, for so, us international, okay, we have shipping to pay too, so it's going to be even more. <laughs> yeah. I think you know it's a it's a pretty high price. Never mind adding the shipping on top. And as I say, I mean I, I don't I don't have most of their normal type of priced stuff because I'm refused to pay the shipping. Because for half of the things you pay more for the shipping than you do for the item. Um, so yeah, it's a bit it's a bit much unless they're going to add you know more and in, more into it. Yeah, uh... it's, it's bad, especially if you're going to use something like Tenso. Um, and you want it faster, that's just, that's even harder and more expensive. Yeah. And so final, final say about the price. We, we don't, we generally don't like it. <laughs> we don't like yeah. it. Overarching thoughts. It is bad. Yeah. <laughs> but I suppose it'll be interesting to see then, you know, in, in one way, you kind of don't want them to sell too many so that they stay in the game. But then, on the other hand, you don't want that to happen because then they might just go, "Oh, well, we'll just not do stuff." Yeah, it's, it's a very conflicting thing, like, but ho hopefully, they'll yeah, still get ahead. sales in in Japan anyway. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully it goes well. Hopefully, we just get better results. Uh, let's just say, well, hopefully, we will get better results. So, anyway, can I continue on with my thread? I wasn't done. <laughs> yeah, you can go ahead. Okay, so. If, if you want to throw in your comments, feel free. Because um, I know a lot of people won't agree with it. I I kind of don't agree with some of them. But I thought it would happen. Anyway, number four. Um, the album finally won't include remakes except for one song. 
and that one song might be human in the there. Really? The, you think they're going to do a new Cold Bible song? Oh, maybe. I would just, I, I know. I, just any one song. Oh, okay. They'll presumably still have a, a new Mezzese as well. Oh, well, oh, yeah, Mezzese oh, is a given. But that, that would be, like, new, in my opinion. Okay, number okay, five. Okay, what's the rest? The second song for the year will have the same Gambare vibe. But the choreography won't be as intense. So energetic song, but not as intense. But like, choreography. Yeah. Okay. You know, on that on that note of intense choreography, um, something uh, I've noticed that I noticed in one of the other performances, and I noticed that again in the transfer ceremony, um, that Sugu, but Soyo especially, like how much do they sweat when they are on stage? They look like they are absolutely melting. You can see but, it on uh, like their forehead. Yeah, it's it's, it's that, that's it that's it exactly. A it's the fringes. The fringes like are totally stuck to them. But Soyo is in addition to that, she goes really pink as well. I just it's always really kind of amusing because a lot of the other ones don't look like you can obviously tell that they're sweating a little bit and that they're tired. But those two and Soyo in particular just looks wiped out every time. Yeah, it, <laughs> so like of course they have to think about like tiredness when they do this. Uh, choreography kind of things but uh you know you never know from sg so what's what's the rest of your prediction okay number six a new type of dvd this year either from the festival or anniversary live really really i don't know and anything can happen in 2017 especially with ico under president I was gonna say, it's the year of ico I well ico did promise the 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 best sg ever that was one I of mean, her it didn't happen with Shirai, and Shirai made a lot of things happen. <laughs> maybe yeah. she could carry on the spirit of Shirai. I don't... But maybe she'll do what Shirai didn't, and bring us another DVD this year, either from the festival huh. or anniversary live. Ha! Huh. Okay. Okay, number seven. The live stream that will replace Slow Girl will either be difficult to access for foreigners, or be paid content. Oh, yeah. yeah. Can see that happen. That's that's uh, yeah. I feel like that's pretty obvious. So like that's a mutual agreement then. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, th I think the the paid content one is is probably the most likely. I can see them. You know, if they are going to set something up themselves, then as companies tend to be, they'll be like, oh, well, we should be remunerated, and so they'll, they'll do. So. Hopefully, though, it will be something like you know. Um, Night speaker, and then it's you know it's a pretty cheap and easy thing, but we shall see. But I can definitely see it becoming a paid thing. Yeah. Okay. Number eight, the class test prank will be a lot different to recent years, and it won't be something we're expecting. So it's not going to be like, oh, you're actually doing this, or you're doing this schedule, but it's actually a prank. No, I feel like it's going to be different. Well, he's got to step his game up this year because he did quite a, an elaborate one for 2016. So. Yeah, they, they've been basically doing, well, in my opinion, they've been, they've been basically doing the same kind of, they kind of repeated 2015 this yeah, they're year. Gonna, they're going to be expecting it, that's why. But kind so of just made it longer. It. Yeah, so that, that, I agree. They, they probably would have to change it. Because they're expect, even, la even last year they were ex kind of expecting something. Yeah, this is their eighth test. They're going to have to step up their game. They're, gonna, they're always you're like rescheduling stuff. So I feel like this is the year. Okay, number nine. Class test ranks will have Megu and Momoe competing for first, Aiko for second, and Momoko will rank up to at least seven. That's not a bold prediction. I mean, I, I, Aiko second might be a little bold, but I, I can see it. Uh, I don't think it's that bold. What, what do you think, Doug? Um, well, yeah, I think Ico can definitely be in and about the, the top end. That's I think that's easy enough. It's whether whether or not Momoko can make that kind of a jump, however, is, a, is another matter. Uh, that's that's five see. ranks up. Do you think she can do that? Well, that's not sure. Rion did it. They're, they're super ladies, so, you know, they can do whatever they put their minds to, but that'll be interesting. We've got two new unknown quantities now as well, uh, adding into the mix, but yeah, we'll see, we'll see. 
If okay. Renon can do it, if Marina can do it. <laughs> okay. True. Yeah. Number 11. Mickey is going to write more diaries than Miku. I can see that. Mm-hmm. I, 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 don't, I, I don't have an opinion. I don't have a comment on it. But I don't think it's... I don't think it's like... Uh, there's no way to tell right now. Yeah, there's no way to tell. Cool. That's why it's a prediction. I know, but I'm just like... Like, just where, to, but where are these predictions coming from, though? Like, you know, I'm just like... Just from you, anything, from, really. From her mind. <laughs> from my mind. Oh, yeah, but like using... From her magical you, glass ball of power. You have to base it, like, even... Uh, even, even small I'm not basing it on anything. It. I'm just, you know... It's, I just wrote it. Okay. 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 Cool. Quickly going back to your your um, one a second ago, do you think that Aiko will get a higher score than Sarah? In the or in, Sarah in terms of year? in terms of position or actual score, both. Uh, so let's, if I, let's go with let no, let's go with actual score. Positions are really score, so that's not as important because obviously Sarah. What did Sarah, set, what did Sarah get? Uh, she was. Tw- Spoiler alert. 12. It's in the it's in the script here. Let me. Uh, it scores are really kind of 13. unfair. She got thirteen. And scores are kind of really one. unfair sometimes. I cause... feel like I feel like Igo can overtake the thirteen. Um, it's kind of unfair sometimes because like I, I've noticed that it's generally the tests have generally been getting easier, or at least it seems like it's getting it's getting easier. Uh. But I'm just gonna go with she's not gonna get past thirteen. I, sh- I should rephrase the question. Actually, the what my, the question really is: Well, do you think Aiko can become um, can beat Sarah the and be the most successful president um, in the mental test? She's gonna she get fourteen. Could. She's gonna get. She 14. could, but I don't think she is. She got twelve point five last year. She's gonna get fourteen this year. I gotta make that step up. There's Moa, such a Moa, huge gap Moa between the, the first half well. and second half. This. Moa generally did well, but she did bad on her president presidency president presidency year. year. Yes, I will. Yeah, but that's, that's, like, that's like an opposite. So Moa usually did well, right? In like the years leading up to her presidency, and then she as soon as she became president, it just went seventh, and then. And then the but other Aiko did well this the other last year. Who did not do as well rose up in their final year. Except yeah, but Aiko, Aiko rose up in her second last year. Yeah, so Aiko's just getting better and better. But wouldn't you say. Mm, yeah, they can do better, but they can't. You know, it's not, it's not to say that they will do. Really, really good. Like I, I said that I think I can do it because I, I do think she's gonna be pretty good. But that's not to say that she will, like, do amazing. Okay. Well, my prediction is written in text. I okay. cannot change it. Um, good. Another one is Marin will show more English phrases this year, and will write huh? a diary on in- entry on English language in the later part of the season. Ha! 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 Say what you want, Frankie. I think Frankie may be skeptical. <laughs> I would love to see that. That'd be really. That'd be right. Great. So someone write Man, me down. If she, if she does do it, you owe me um a, an apology. Sure. Anyway, someone someone write it down. Martin, you owe Martin. I don't. I don't think she's gonna do that. If she does it, you should value the DVD. <laughs> if she doesn't do it this year, then I'll 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 apologize on behalf of Martin. I don't care about your apology. Okay, well, yeah. <laughs> I do. Rest, so Rusty money, guitarist you, thinks that Ico is going to be middle of the pack. Anyway, number twelve is Kano and Marin are going to go taller than Ico. It could happen yeah. in this year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. And the last one is we'll get more, a little, just a little bit more variety and talk show appearances than last year. <sighs> Let's hope so. Maybe by like one or two shows. At, at the With the loss of a stream, it is highly possible. But with 
knowing or, or knowing SG, who knows? So knowing who knows? Kind of contradicting, but the thing is, yeah. if uh, as as a uh, ultimately, obviously, Muse being a business, if they want to continue, if they want the band to continue to be a success, they're going to have to advertise somehow. So if they're not, if they don't have a stream, then they have to have them on shows, surely, in order to promote the fact that they've got stuff happening. If they've got songs out or albums out or 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 videos or whatever it might be, because that was what you know they did in Low Girl. Whenever something came out, they would promote it. So if they're not going to do that, they have to do it somewhere else. Otherwise, they're going to see a decline in sales and performance. So I can't see mm. how they can't have more TV shows if they're not going to have a new stream unless they've just kind of went meh. Whatever. Yeah. It doesn't make it doesn't make business sense to not to not have something. It does. <laughs> but amuse things. Anyway, is that all you that, that's all I have for predictions. Anything that's all okay. Uh, you have any predictions, Frankie? Uh, no, no. Why does it seem like you're hiding a it, it, I feel like you, you have something, Frankie. Just yeah, yeah, out. there's definitely something there. Spit it out, and then we can sit sure, on sure, man. I, I predict that I'll, I would, I will still like Miki more than Miki by the end of the year. There you go. That's it? Oh. Yeah. That's... Okay. Well, there's a lot of other people who like Miki to make up for that, so... I'm sure I'll, I'll I'll maybe throw out some more predictions as as the year goes goes by, but for now I'll keep Playing keep to myself. Safe. Play it safe. Any predictions for you, Doug? Um, let me see. Let me see. Well, yeah, I think that they will. I think that they will come up with a new show of some description. What that. Where that like will be home. Wise, or... Yeah, they'll come up with their own version of Low Girl at some point. Um, I think, because to me, it it unless, as I say, they're they're willing to take a bit of a hit, then it just to me seems daft and stupid to not. So I think that they will come up with something. Um, like Ivana said, I think that that you know might end up being. Um, you know, a pay service of some description, and we'll see how that goes. Um, someone said in the chat, sorry, uh, uh, it's a wee bit further back now, so I'm not sure who it was that said it, but someone said that sometimes if you set things like that, they don't always, they're not always successful. But I would perhaps disagree just on the fact that they've got, a, because they've got such a, a fan basis already, um, and if it looks like it's going to be something similar to Logo, I think a lot of people would get on board, even if it had a, a paywall, assuming it wasn't ridiculously priced. So I, I don't think that'd be too big a problem. So I think that they'll have something. So that would be one prediction. Um, uh, I'm going to predict that um, we're, we'll get Yuzu in Logica and um, Momoe in Sleepies to fill the spaces. Uh, I think that will happen. Uh, to me, those they fit those way around. I think that would suit the best. I can see Yuzu in the glasses and uh, Momoi, I think, would take her vertical to new levels um, in the sleep piece outfits as well. So I'll go with that. And I think that's about it. I have a couple of things I'd like to see. Hopefully, I've said already, hopefully new music would quite like that. I'd quite like a new video some soonish. That'd be nice. Um, that would be pretty good. Um, but also maybe if if possible some more some more frequent live stuff as well. I think that'd be good. But, uh, but I don't think that'll happen. I, I would like that to happen, but I don't think it will because I don't think I don't know if they've got the time to practice and things like that. So we shall see. But yeah, so that that would that would be my things. Okay, so I think that wraps it up for today. Sorry, there's no game. <laughs> yeah, sorry, there's more of a talky episode. But maybe some of you guys like that. Let us know. I don't know. But yeah. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, happy Mother's Day. 
Make sure you're oh, yeah. your mom. Maybe. Grandma. And maybe some of your mothers. Maybe. Maybe some of your mothers. Who knows? Maybe you're the mother of your pet. I don't know. Yeah. Happy Mother's Day. Um, look out for the replay, which will be up probably sometime next week or two weeks from now. Um, next episode will be in June. As you would expect it to be. Uh, maybe we'll have a game that time as well. Maybe different hosts. Who knows? We'll try and surprise you. But yeah, thanks for watching. And you have the rest of your day. Have a good one. Yeah, see you guys. Yep. Bye. Thanks, guys. See you later.